Chapter 546 Transformation The ship is here, too. Seeing the appearance of this man, Duoru couldn't help but feel a surge of jealousy. How could this man be so handsome? He was even more handsome than the male elves secretly raised in his mansion. His demeanor was also extraordinary, as if he walked on the water with the composure of the vast and boundless sea, naturally instilling a sense of awe and submission in people's hearts. With the arrival of this man, the deviant ghosts, who had been growling and scratching moments ago, as if they had encountered something terrifying, suddenly changed their fierce expressions to ones of fear and panic. They hastily leaped off the warship and vanished into the water. Duoru's mind abruptly jolted, snapping him out of his emotions, and his eyes were now filled with anxiety. Who are you to dare to snatch something from our kingdom of Bass? You should be very clear about my identity, Ji Chen replied with a faint smile. I was present the first time you attacked Feiguang City. Oh, by the way, the deceiver next to you should also know me. I even captured a revered envoy named Katie from your side. Duoru was slightly stunned but quickly realized. His eyes almost spewed fire. So, it was this guy. The Lord of Glory who single-handedly destroyed their base kingdom's attack on Feiguang City, captured the Eighth Fleet, and outwitted the fool known as Shalifa. He dug up the Tree of Life right under their noses and even got his hands on divine treasures before them. After causing so much damage to their interests, this guy actually dared to appear in front of them so brazenly. This is outrageous. Thinking of being played all the way, Duoru shouted in anger. All cannons, aim at him, blast him to pieces. Watching as the muzzles of dozens of warships from two fleets slowly pointed at him, Ji Chen's face showed no fear and a faint smile curved at the corner of his mouth. Thirty years east of the river, thirty years west of the river, N, a Chinese idiom that suggests that circumstances can change over time, and what is dominant or advantageous in one place or period may become less so in another. Do you still think I'm the same as before? Uh, sorry, I got carried away there. Ji Chen just raised his right hand, and clumps of seawater quickly filled the various sized gun barrels, hardening like cement. Skill, cement seal. Duoru's pupils shrank dramatically, cursing in anger. Cease fire. But it was too late. Other warships had already pulled down the firing levers. Boom. The completely blocked gun barrels suffered a detonation, and the slender, integrated gun barrels were violently torn apart into several pieces by the intense energy, opening up like petals, which was quite comical. Report. All of our gun barrels are now scrap. Duoru was so furious that he almost wanted to spit blood. He didn't expect Ji Chen to have such a cunning trick. You're too despicable. Without the cannons on their steel warships, they were essentially like lifeless steel coffins adrift on the water, no longer capable of posing any danger. Ji Chen casually created water ladders, arrived at the bow of the ship, and said in an unwavering tone, You now have two choices. One is to surrender and become prisoners so you can still return alive. The second is death. You have one minute to consider. Looking at the cannons of his warship that could be blown up with ease and facing such a powerful enemy, all the soldiers fell silent, filled with fear, waiting for orders from Duoru. However, Duoru's eyes were extremely red. He punched through the command room's glass and jumped out, and his body suddenly burst with a powerful aura. Do you think that destroying the cannons will allow you to capture us? I'm not that fool Shalifa. One will make you pay. Saying that, Duoru's body expanded several times, instantly turning into a tall man over two meters high. His footsteps left shallow footprints on the deck as he roared lowly, charging towards Ji Chen with a surging momentum. Ma, nice soldier's eyes filled with hope. Their commander was a famous warrior in the kingdom, who once fought and killed hundreds of giants single-handedly and even defeated a ground-dwelling dragon. Perhaps he could teach this arrogant enemy a lesson. Watching the charging Duoru, Ji Chen shook his head and waved his hand. Suddenly, a figure rushed out behind him, moving at the speed of a cannonball, and in the blink of an eye, collided with Duoru. Immediately after, one of them was sent flying backward. Many soldiers of the Bass Kingdom widened their eyes, dumbfounded because the one sent flying was their commander, Duoru. Anina let out a sigh of relief and looked disdainfully at Duoru, who was embedded in the steel plate on the bridge, unable to move. 
punching the 8th Fleet Commander, Shalifa, and kicking the 3rd Fleet Commander, Duoru, into submission. Do you understand the value of being the commander killer of the Bass Kingdom fleet? Witnessing their own commander being thrashed on the bridge like a rag doll, all the soldiers of the Bass Kingdom lost their will to fight. They exchanged helpless glances and, in the end, chose to raise the white flag. It's not that they didn't want to fight, but the truth was that there was no chance of winning this battle. When even their own commander was beaten into such a state what could these little soldiers possibly do to resist desperately? Ji Chen saw that the soldiers were cooperating like this, and nodded slightly. If they chose not to surrender, fought to the death, or even destroyed the warships, it would mean there would be no ships to transport the Elves of Vale anymore. At this moment, he suddenly noticed that the deceiver had arrived on the deck, looking somewhat unusual. Ji Chen furrowed his brows. Surrender now you have no chance of winning this war. When he said you, he was not referring to these two fleets, but rather the Deceiver organization. Only to see that the Deceiver's eyes were filled with resentment and bitterness. They planned for this war for so long, paying an immeasurable price. Everything was going smoothly. If they had successfully taken Feiguang City at that time, they would have been able to quickly annihilate Leanhard and use its resources for the war, followed by the destruction of the Thori Kingdom and the Pelon Kingdom. This would have allowed them to unify the vast land along the northwest coast under the control of the Bass Kingdom. And the Deceiver would have reappeared before the world, no longer hiding like sewer rats, ending thousands of years of oppression. But all of this was ruined by a glory lord named Ji Chen. How could they not feel resentment? Do you think you already have won the game? You lowly glory lord, you who gain power from those deities, vile and dirty divine patron, I will make you pay. A hint of madness appeared in the deceiver's eyes as he sneered and took out a scroll and a dagger. Ji Chen immediately felt that something was wrong and wanted to intervene, but it was already too late. The deceiver stabbed the dagger into his own heart, and the bright red blood sprayed onto the scroll, instantly emitting a dazzling red light. Immediately after, the scroll broke free from its bindings and flew into the air, exploding into a red dot. Ji Chen's expression became serious at this moment because he felt that the nearby spatial nodes were becoming fragile and the previously stable spatial structure was gradually collapsing. Suddenly, a dark crack-like line appeared in the sky and then, like shattered glass, a spiderweb-like crack blossomed in the air, connecting into a 10-meter-wide eye-shaped rift in an instant. Amidst a piercing, soul-chilling screech akin to a steamship's whistle, a jagged tentacle, as thick as several human arms, reached out from the collapsing tear in space. It kept widening the fracture, and the monstrous sea creature from the outside world was making its way through the ruptured spatial rift. Ji Chen's expression changed slightly, and he immediately said, Alice, take Arlen and the others away from here quickly. Realizing the urgency of the situation, Alice nodded and quickly led the elf team away. As the tentacles continued to shift and press, the rift kept expanding and tearing apart. The colossal body, akin to an iceberg, was squeezing its way in. Once Alice and her team had retreated over a thousand meters away, the full appearance of the tentacles' master became completely visible. Eight massive tentacles, as thick as ancient trees, capable of raising waves several meters high with a single movement, covered in countless suction cups, and inside those suction cups were rows of razor-sharp teeth, emitting a chilling cold light. On the head, which was as large as a castle, there were two huge crimson eyes like windows, projecting beams of light. The creature before his eyes, towering over 60 to 70 meters above the sea surface, single-handedly causing a tidal wave that swept through most of the Western Ocean, was none other than a giant octopus. North Sea Monster, Krakenjir, Gold Tier Epic, Level 55, Chapter 547, Kraken, A New Move. When this colossal octopus, the Kraken of the Northern Sea, floated on the water's surface, it cast a massive shadow below. The Basque Kingdom soldiers standing on the deck were already dumbfounded, their faces filled with shock and fear. If the warship's cannons were still intact, they might have had the courage to launch an attack. However, most of the cannons had already exploded, 
and the remaining ones were as feeble as small water pipes. It seemed unlikely that they could inflict any effective damage on this behemoth. The Kraken, with eyes like crimson spotlights, scanned these steel constructions floating on the water. It flashed a hint of disgust and anger. On its way here, it was attacked by more than ten of these metallic creations. Although it eventually submerged them all, it sustained considerable damage from the high-speed projectiles, slowing down its progress. But now was not the time to deal with these metal constructs. The Kraken turned its attention to the human not far away, detecting an aroma more enticing than food itself, an aroma that it had longed for in its dreams. Greed filled its eyes. The power of the ocean was within this human. As long as it could obtain this power, it would gain the capital to command countless sea creatures and become the master of this vast ocean. It raised one of its tentacles, wielding it like a whip, a simple motion that appeared terrifying due to its immense size, akin to a giant tree crashing down. Ji Chen remained unfazed, controlling the water to carry himself out of the range of the tentacle's attack. He conjured hundreds of water-formed weapons without sparing a glance, then casually launched them. The Kraken's body was too massive. Even casual shots were bound to hit. To Ji Chen's amazement, when the hundreds of water-formed weapons, capable of piercing through solid gold and breaking rocks, hit the Kraken's body, they were all repelled by a see-through layer of scales. All that remained were faint white marks. This colossal creature had a formidable defense, even on such a colossal body? This thought only flashed in Ji Chen's mind briefly. He didn't have time to dwell on it. He swiftly moved to the side, barely leaving a ten-meter gap between himself and the tentacle. The next moment, the tentacle crashed into the water, creating a massive splash, sending water sprays tens of meters high into the air. The Kraken's size was simply colossal, and it was the first time Ji Chen had ever seen such a massive behemoth. Each tentacle had a width of three to four meters, and their lengths reached nearly sixty to seventy meters. Any casual strike formed a vast attack area. The eight tentacles swung almost without any attack intervals, forming an impenetrable web of attacks. This was enough to make any ordinary enemy despair. However, Ji Chen maneuvered skillfully between these tentacles, seemingly on the verge of being struck each time, but narrowly avoiding them. This performance left the Bass Kingdom soldiers in awe, and they couldn't help but exclaim in astonishment. In their hearts, they couldn't help but pray for him. If Ji Chen were to be struck down by the tentacle, their situation would truly be hopeless. They didn't believe that this giant octopus would spare them. To it, they were delectable morsels. As they watched Ji Chen narrowly escape being to death by the tentacles time and time again, the Kraken finally realized what was happening and let out an angry roar. This human was toying with it. Seeing the Kraken's reaction, a smile appeared on Ji Chen's face. After all, sea creatures were still sea creatures, and they would ultimately follow their savage instincts. His previous evasion without retaliation, which appeared quite miserable, was deliberate. He was observing the Kraken's attack patterns. The power of the ocean endowed him with a keen perception. Whether the Kraken swung its tentacles horizontally or struck vertically, whether it attacked to the right or the left, the disturbance of the CU, Aether had already been pre-sensed by him, allowing him to evade in time. At first, he was very cautious and alert in his mind. After all, the Kraken was the first epic-level enemy he had faced head-on. With the title of epic-level, it should have had a powerful attack method, such as formidable magic or bloodline abilities. However, during these dozens of minutes of evasion and probing, he realized a problem. This big guy seemed to only know how to use its tentacles to attack in a straightforward and brutish manner. It was just too stupid. If the Kraken knew what Ji Chen was thinking, it would probably argue righteously. It only needed its massive body and eight swinging tentacles to flatten all kinds of enemies. Why bother evolving other attack abilities? After completely understanding the Kraken's attack pattern, Ji Chen lost patience with further entanglement. After narrowly evading another powerful tentacle strike, he retreated several hundred meters away. His deep-sea dragon scale robe glowed faintly, and three fully blue, approximately ten-meter-long elemental water dragons appeared abruptly, soaring towards the Kraken. Water Dragon Summoning 
summons three elemental water dragons with 50% of the user's power, capable of independent combat. Having possessed half of Ji Chen's strength referred to half of his power in the magical sense, not the power of the ocean. It pertained to the Lord's innate talent for this more profound form of power. Three elemental water dragons spewed water arrows, causing obvious discomfort to the kraken. Even the speed of its swinging tentacles increased. However, the elemental water dragons flapped their wings with agility, evading the attacks, and soared into the sky beyond the reach of the tentacles. They continuously spewed water arrows, making the kraken very uncomfortable. Chapter 548 Kraken, a new move, too. The originally crimson eyes became even more vibrant as if they were about to radiate a red glow. You despicable human, you've actually summoned elemental creatures. In that case, it shall summon as well. The kraken ignored the elemental water dragon's attacks. Instead, its tentacles delved into the shattered space rift behind it, churning it vigorously. Over time, this caused a rift to emerge near the water's surface, measuring tens of meters in width and more than 10 meters in height. A multitude of sea creatures poured out of the rift. Ji Chen's eyes showed some surprise. There were actually such methods? The kraken waved its tentacles to maintain the creation of the rift. Under the web-like cracks that filled the sky, hundreds of sea creatures rushed forward with bared teeth and claws, while Ji Chen faced them alone. This scene resembled a legendary mural, depicting a lone hero confronting evil. However, he was not alone. Suddenly, in the distant sky, a shower of arrows appeared, falling down in torrents and piercing through hundreds of sea creatures instantly. It was Alice and her team who had returned to support. Following the arrow shower were spells and lightning bolts, shining like shooting stars as they fell into the surging sea creature horde, bursting like fireworks. Flesh and blood splattered, and the seawater was dyed red in an instant. Immediately afterward, other melee units rushed into the battlefield, dealing death to the enemy with their weapons. Lord, we've come back to support you. Alice hurried over and immediately used her singing to incite over a thousand sea creatures to rebel and attack their own kind. Ji Chen nodded and wasted no time. Alice, Benbo, leads the army to engage the sea creatures. Anina, Harold, assist me in attacking this giant octopus. Anina nodded, facing the epic tier kraken. She didn't dare to underestimate it. This was the most formidable enemy she had ever faced in her life, but she felt no fear in her heart. In an instant, she transformed into a giant whale and charged forward. Harold also vibrated his wings and flew towards it. As a raging bloodline of the deep sea naga, he felt no fear. Because it needed to maintain the spatial rift, the kraken could only summon four of its tentacles to counterattack. Anina, transformed into a giant whale, was about 40 to 50 meters long, and even relative to the massive body of the kraken, she didn't appear small at all. After dodging the first wave of fierce attacks, she quickly clamped her bloodthirsty jaws onto the tentacle's breakpoint. Her bone-crushing teeth penetrated the protective scales, sinking deep into the flesh and continuously tearing and shaking. The intense pain from the tentacle made the kraken roar in anger, trying to shake off the giant whale's bite by swinging it around. However, the giant whale seemed as if it was firmly anchored and couldn't be shaken off no matter how hard it tried. The kraken had no choice but to use another tentacle to strike. The giant whale felt as though it had been struck by a heavy hammer, and with a painful groan, it released its grip. The tentacle that had been bitten was almost severed, with only a small portion still attached. However, the damaged part was visibly regenerating at an astonishing speed, and it wouldn't be long before it healed completely. Just as the kraken was about to continue its attack on the giant whale, Harold, who had circled around to the side, launched an attack. He flashed like a streak of blue light, leaving several deep wounds on the tentacle. Utilizing his advantage of flight, Harold agilely maneuvered between the three remaining tentacles, leaving behind a trail of wounds. The kraken was both shocked and furious, since it had ascended to the epic level, it had never been in such a sorry state before. The blood within its body boiled like boiling water, and immense power surged from its several hearts. The wounds on its tentacles rapidly healed, and its strength increased several times. S over. 
The Kraken seized the opportunity when Harold was about to launch another attack. Its tentacles swiftly struck, sending Harold flying like a ball. This strike contained terrifying power, enough to shatter an iceberg. Even with Harold's formidable constitution, he still suffered fractures in more than a dozen bones and coughed up a large amount of blood, looking dejected. The giant whale, Anina, emerged from underwater, intending to bite once more, but her body was bound by the kraken's four tentacles. The suction cups on the tentacles' teeth deeply pierced her body, releasing a massive amount of paralyzing toxin and sucking her blood. The giant whale let out a mournful cry. Although the paralyzing toxin had little effect on her due to her bloodline, a large amount of blood was being sucked away, and her strength was dwindling rapidly. Thousands of sharp teeth continued to tear into her flesh as if she had been thrown into a meat grinder. It was as if her body was being constantly cut by a thousand sharp blades. At this moment, several streaks of blue light suddenly flashed, cutting through the tentacles that had bound the giant whale, and she quickly escaped to a safe distance. She reverted to her human form, covered in injuries, her face pale as snow. Lord, Anina looked at the Lord, a hint of self-blame and fear flashing in her eyes. Ji Chen shook his head and said, You both rest for now, I will deal with it. Anina and Harold's performances were within his expectations. After all, one was a red legacy tier and the other an orange legend tier, which were far inferior to the already epic tier Kraken. Tier was an important factor in determining strength, and the gap in power between two tiers was quite substantial. Moreover, both of them were of lower levels than the Kraken, making the difference even more pronounced. Ji Chen's expression turned solemn as he suddenly activated his domain. Ocean Domain, Golden Skill, can expand a domain with a radius of 800 meters, reducing all enemy attributes within the domain by 0 to 90 percent. The effect depends on the difference in strength between enemies and the user, reducing 50% physical and magical damage, reducing 50% mana consumption. The domain can absorb nearby water sources, forming a suspended water domain in the air. His primary profession had evolved into an epic tier, and the title Dominator, which was Orange Tier, had evolved into the Golden Tier Ocean Dominator. The domain instantly covered the Kraken, with a radius of 800 meters. Ding! The ocean domain envelops the enemy, North Sea Monster Kraken, reducing its attributes by 30%. The immense power of the domain directly stripped away 25% of the Kraken's attributes, equivalent to weakening it by almost a third. This effectively compensated for the power difference between the two sides due to their levels and even tilted the balance in favor of Ji Chen. Feeling his body and strength suddenly weakened significantly, the Kraken's crimson eyes showed a look of shock. This? A domain? This human actually possessed the power of a domain. It couldn't be. Absolutely impossible. Even it, the Kraken, didn't have a domain. How could this human possess one? Even though the Kraken's mind was not mature, at this moment it felt jealousy towards humans. Fueled by anger and jealousy, it retracted the four tentacles that were maintaining the spatial rift. The rift was instantly repaired by the power of the mystic realm, and some sea beasts that were caught in the middle were instantly split into two, with one part inside and the other outside. The kraken churned its massive body and swung its eight tentacles wildly, intent on tearing this human apart on the spot. However, when the kraken voluntarily entered the domain and didn't retreat, its fate had already been sealed. Ji Chen raised his hand, and with the domain's enhancement, easily condensed thousands of water-based weapons. They fell like a shower of rain, easily penetrating the Kraken's previously impenetrable scales, sinking deep into its flesh like silver needles. The Kraken screamed in agony, but showed no intention of stopping, instead putting all its effort into using its bloodline power to repair its injuries. However, the water-based weapons that had entered its body didn't dissipate. They remained lodged in its flesh like thorns in the throat. Ji Chen watched as the Kraken charged towards him without regard for its own safety and lightly snapped his fingers. Bang, bang. A series of crisp and short explosions rang out and blue blood mist burst from the Kraken's body. Milky white chunks of flesh tumbled and its body was covered in craters. Those water-based weapons that remained inside its body became small explosives, 
constantly exploding within its body. When the commotion subsided, the Kraken had already collapsed onto an iceberg, no longer capable of launching an attack. Its alluring blue blood spread on the icy surface. Ji Chen slowly revealed a smile. This was a new technique he had developed after absorbing the power of the ocean. He infused mana into the water-based weapons, then detonated the mana when they penetrated the enemy's body, causing massive damage. The Kraken had become the first victim of this technique. Chapter 549. Sandbag, the giant North Sea monster, submits. However, the Kraken's recovery speed far exceeded Ji Chen's imagination. In just a few seconds, the wounds on its body were visibly healing at an astonishing rate, and its tentacles became active once more. After all, an epic tier creature possessed innate, powerful bloodline strength. The Kraken's bloodline power was a terrifying regenerative ability. As long as it didn't suffer catastrophic damage in an instant, the power surging from deep within its bloodline could continuously heal its body. Furthermore, the Kraken belonged to the family of sea creatures with exceptionally robust vitality, making it nearly indestructible when combined with its bloodline power. Ji Chen was initially surprised, but then a peculiar smile crossed his face. Being able to heal wounds rapidly, wasn't this just a living punching bag? Coincidentally, he advanced to the epic tier and he had many new techniques he wanted to try, so he decided to use this giant octopus as a test subject. After recovering most of its injuries, the Kraken charged towards him vigorously once more. In its crimson eyes, excitement was evident. Human, you cannot kill me. My power is endless. Suddenly, a rapidly spinning vortex appeared on the sea's surface. In just a few seconds, it expanded to hundreds of meters in size. The massive Kraken was caught off guard and was pulled into it. Despite its efforts to move its body, it was still drawn in by the enormous suction force of the vortex. As the vortex rapidly spun, every drop of seawater inside it turned into sharp blades, rotating at high speed under the influence of magic. The Kraken let out a painful cry as it was pulled into the depths of the sea, reaching a depth of a hundred meters. It was disoriented and then forcibly pushed back to the surface of the sea with great force, in a sorry state. Ji Chen looked at the Kraken, now paralyzed once again, and couldn't help but wear an evil smile. Anina and Harold watched the arrogant North Sea monster being toyed with like a plaything by the Lord. They were dumbfounded. A deep sense of reverence arose in their hearts. On this day, in this desolate frozen wilderness, the endless and desolate screams echoed. Once again, the Kraken was pounded onto an iceberg like a lump of mud, miserable. At this point, it was covered in various wounds, and its recovery speed was no longer as impressive as before. Bloodline power was not limitless, it had a threshold. After being knocked down dozens of times, the Kraken's bloodline power was approaching depletion. The force pumped by its heart was as dry as a dried-up riverbed, unable to squeeze out another drop. Ji Chen was contemplating whether to continue when he heard the Kraken emit a sound that resembled a baby's crying. He paused, perplexed. Was this the Kraken crying because it got beaten up? At this moment, the Kraken was deeply saddened. It originally believed that after lurking for hundreds of years and ascending to the epic tier, it could become the master of this ocean like its ancestors. However, reality handed it a big slap in the face. A tiny human could humiliate it, slapping it around like trash. Its proud and mighty regenerative power became the other party's means to play with it at will. Who could endure such humiliation? The Kraken felt that its dignity was being trampled upon ruthlessly, Seeing that Ji Chen seemed inclined to continue, it suddenly begged. Chirp! Stop it! I surrender! Ji Chen was slightly taken aback. This octopus could speak? In fact, when any race evolves to a certain extent, they develop ways to communicate with other species. This was a commonality among higher beings. Chirp! I don't want the power of the ocean anymore. I'll leave immediately. With that, the kraken, battered and bruised, tried to leave. However, when it turned around, it found itself surrounded by thousands of solidified water weapons. Having suffered from this once, its hair stood on end in fear. At its current state, it coo, didn't withstand another such attack, or it would definitely meet its demise. Chirp! Human, you've gone too far. I said I don't want the power of the ocean anymore. What else do you want? Ji Chen stared at the Kraken with a cold expression. 
You came here on your own accord. Wouldn't it be an embarrassment for me if you just leave as you when you want? Humph. You coveted my power of the ocean and injured my two subordinates. Shouldn't you compensate? The Kraken's eyes rolled around, trying to understand. According to the memories it inherited from its bloodline, relationships in the sea were typically based on the law of the jungle, where everything was obtained through plunder, and there was no concept of compensation. Could this be a human thing? The Kraken secretly thought, and then carefully used its tentacles to gently roll up a shark-shaped sea creature nearby, placing it on the water's surface not far from Ji Chen. Chirp, human, this is compensation. Can you let me go now? This time, Ji Chen was truly stunned, as he had never expected such a turn of events. After thinking it over, it seemed he understood something. He calmly stated, I'll give you two choices now. One is death, and the other is to enter into a master and slave contract with me. Chirp. A master and slave contract? Impossible. The great bloodline of the North Sea monster will never submit to anyone. The Kraken's reaction was extremely intense. As a being with a powerful bloodline, the ruler of the North Sea, it had never submitted to any other race. As far as it could trace its ancestry, there were no memories of the North Sea monster ever submitting to another race.